task person. Good afternoon, good afternoon, beautiful Wednesday. Sidewalk ministry, excellent day, nice breeze, warm, sunny, and we have wonderful people, look at that. Beautiful crowd, we are grateful and thankful. Uh, we pray for Sister Alice who's on a cruise in Alaska. That's why I'm here by myself, one man show, doing everything, you know, between the customers and the store. So praise the Lord. Uh, I don't have Marky because she's at the school. This is her last week, so, so I'm like, short. Sure, that's okay. Praise the Lord. God, God's with me, Jesus. So we're covered. The Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and myself. It's four of us working, plus all you guys. Smile, will you? Smile. Yeah, that's not real smile. It's just not real. Everybody got some water? All right. Open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. Today we're going to continue our study. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this amazing day, Lord. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for the pastors. Thank you for, oh, for all the everyone who are here today, Lord. Thank you for the amazing uh, sandwiches and all the food was provided for us. From my mom, Elizabeth. From Mandalay Bay, thank you for all that. Thank you for the donuts. Thank you for the muffins. Thank you for so many things. We're just grateful and thankful for, for all your provisions, O oh Lord, so we take care of everybody. We are grateful. May you continue blessing us. May you decrease me and increase you. Let the Holy Spirit take over this message. Let the Holy Spirit teach us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. Amen. Open up Ephesians chapter 2. See what I'm saying? I'll do one thing and I'll forget another. Everything is. All right. <coughs> Who remembers last week? Give us a little feedback, please, so I can get excited. Jesus went to heaven. Last week, Ephesians chapter 1, Jesus went to heaven. Jesus went to heaven, yeah, but not, not Ephesians chapter 1, but go on. I'm interested. <laughs> Church, you have to give a hint. Ah. I remember it was the 40 days after. No, that was... was about 40 days after. Okay. Yeah, that was... No, but what was the sub... What was the message of Ephesians 1? It wasn't all time. That all time Huh? What about you, my brother, back there? He said it rained 40 days and 40 nights last week. I guess one of you were talking about the 40 days. <laughs> that. Good Lord, you guys are all over the place. But it's okay. Praise the Lord. It's okay. Yeah. He gave all authority to Jesus Christ. The Father gave all authority to Jesus. He was the, he be, he's, he's, he's the one... Everything is under, but what was the whole message of the whole chapter? That's what I was asking. And why? Who was here for the whole lesson last week? But the Jesus. Great, Bill. Okay. Go on. I'm listening. Clyde, I'm listening. I said Jesus went to heaven and he died for our sins. That, that he became the prince, the master. Right? Yes. But he didn't die in Ephesians chapter 1. He, that was, he went, he is a master of all things. Yes, he is the king of the kings, master of all the principalities, master of all the universe, master of everything. Yes, I agree with you on that part. But what was the whole message about? What was it? Pray for the dead.
I'm listening. of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted Christ should be the praise of his glory Also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in which also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of your inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the praise of his glory. Is that chapter one? Yeah. Therefore, I also, after I heard of you. You guys figured it out? Okay, let's do this thing. Apostle Paul is writing the church in the where? Let's start with that. What church is this letter written to? Temple. Where? Greg, Temple. louder please. Temple. Where? Temple. 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 Okay, he's writing the letter to who? Letter to who? Right, the city of Ephesus. Like Armenians and Americans. The city of Ephesus. He's writing from a prison cell. Remember, we talked about this. This is the church you spend the most time in, the poor, you know, the powerhouse church in the whole region. Established, he spent more time in it, and he's reminding them again that the blessings and the richness that God has given to them is through Christ Jesus. Interesting observation that the scholars believe Apostle Paul's birthday is right around the same time our Lord Jesus Christ so was born and raised at the same time frame he was raised. So they were approximately the same age group, right? And he was also a very orthodox person. He was a very religious person. Remember, he was part of the Sanhedrin. And he studied the scripture under um, Gamaliel, one of the top teachers of the, the Torah. He became a very powerful teacher himself, therefore the phrases Pharisees, so he was fully emerged in the scriptures of the Old Testament during his time. God decided to switch as he got the grace of the New Testament of our Lord Jesus Christ, came in and he had a deal with it and change in heart as, he, as how he's teaching everybody about that. That's the whole purpose, that's what he's doing so much. He's writing these things and telling everybody in all the churches and throughout. But again, very easy. If you remember what city, look at the name of the... So if he's writing a book called Romans, what, what church is he writing it to? What? Where is that? There you go. So Ephesians, it's in Ephesus. Right, Ephesians, right. Ephesians are the people who live in Ephesus. Like 
he's led right into Las Vegas church. So we're the, you know, the Vegas people or whatever you want. To, we're Vegas people. So, so the church will be in Las Vegas. He's writing it to Vegas people. In this case, he's writing it to uh, the Ephesians, the church in Ephesus. The one of the most powerful church, the most important church, because Ephesus was like, like Vegas, like California, like New York, very hustle, bustle, and a lot of active going on. So everything went through in and out of there. So it wasn't just like, you know, Oklahoma, for example. Not everybody knows Oklahoma. Not everybody goes to Oklahoma. But if you go anywhere in the world, you say New York, they know that, right? You say Los Angeles, they know. And you say Las Vegas, they know. You say Oklahoma, they might not know. You say Missouri, they're going to be like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? So Ephesus is that kind of a very important city. So we need to pay attention to that. And then, so he became the best candidate for that change and to teach, to explain uh, to all his Apostle Paul. And this whole book, epistle, is focused on all you need in Jesus. Some people might say a little bit of coffee, whole lot of Jesus, but that's that's the focus is on it. If you have Jesus, all you need are all your needs are met because everything else is just chasing your own tail. You will never reach a pinnacle of happiness by chasing other things. All you need is our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he discovered. See, he was going to Damascus. But you never answered your question. What a question. I'm waiting on while I'm giving you guys the highlights I want to ask you that hopefully you so because remember Bill says give me hints so I'm giving hints this is a hint part the hints so hopefully one of you is gonna go oh yes that's what it was so he says Apostle Paul because he was changed but he starts off with why don't you guys read like the first sentence of Ephesians 1 we all read it already? Yeah. What did he say? Paul. Okay. Paul. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus Christ. By? By the will of God. Okay, there you go. So what is he... Why is he... What is he identifying himself as? What is it, sweetie? No, he's identifying himself for first he's saying Paul, apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the will of God. They meaning that not because he decided, not because he was picked, the Lord picked him. He was on his way to Damascus to go arrest and kill people, Christians. When the Lord showed up on the way. Book of Acts, remember? Wait one second, let this car pass. So we can hear. So on his way, the Lord met him and he fell off the horse, bright light, big sound from the heaven says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Remember? And then he says, who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you are persecuting. Why are you persecuting me? Because I didn't know. So that's when his whole life changed. That was called the change of the road to Damascus. So anybody mentions to you the road to Damascus, now you know what the road to Damascus was. He was on his way down there with his soldiers to go arrest Christians. And he became blind for three days. And then the Lord changed, he gave him sight back, and he became the apostle for the whole region, meaning that all the Gentile world, you and I today, we owe to Apostle Paul of what he did. So now I gave you guys enough hints. What was the message of Ephesians 1? Amen. And you need to pray for spiritual wisdom. Yeah. He calls us. God calls us. Spiritual wisdom. What does that mean? You can pray, right? You want to know things. But to know spiritual wisdom is different. You have to pray and ask, Lord, show me what you want me to do. You, have, you get up this morning, every single one of you, like Bill was saying, 
he got up Monday. He's like, oh, I'm stressed out. My money's running out. I don't even have gas money to go to church, you know, but I need to figure out some of this business situation, right? That's personal need, yes? That's a physical need, personal need. We all have that. All of you some days are hungry, some days are not. All of you some days have more money, some days you don't, right? All of you have some days better and other days not, right? So you have your physical needs, you already know, yes? So what is the spiritual wisdom? Why are you praying for that? Because you see, it's all different when you get up and say, Lord, I know what I need, but what do you need from me? That's a whole different ballgame, isn't it? What do you need from me? That's a spiritual wisdom. You're asking God, you already know what you need. Every day we get up, you know what you need. You know you want more money, more business, more this, more that, I don't know, whatever. You, whatever it is, everybody has a need. Every day you know your needs are. But what? It's different when you ask God, what? is your need of me. It's called spiritual wisdom. Asking God, what can I do for you? Woo, changes the game, ain't it? Try that tomorrow. Try that, all of you. Try it for a week. Every day, get up and say, Lord, what do you need from me? How can I serve you? What is it my purpose? What am I supposed to do? Not all of us know what we're supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I asked too. I don't even know what chapter to teach next. I asked, right? We picked. The Lord guided us. So none of us know what our spiritual God, spiritual needs are. We have to ask for it. That was the message of last week. So let's start with verse 1 of chapter 2. Let's move. Come on. There you go. Go ahead, go ahead. In which you walk, in which you once walk. That's it, just one. And you, and you, say, what do I say it again? Say it again. And you, no, from the beginning. And you, and you were dead in the trespass and sins. Does it say you were made alive? Does it say you made alive? Yeah, Verse you one. Made, uh, he made you alive? No. I don't see that. What? Can you read yours? Young lady, read yours. And you were dead in the trespasses of sin. It's my sin. And then verse 2, in which you once walked, following the curse of this world, that's, following the curse of the next power verse. of the Yeah, okay. It's so just a... Uh, he made you alive. Yeah, he made you alive is not there, because that's it, but it's in, uh, 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 what you call it? It's in the Kaletics, whatever it's called, though. It's... All right. Different versions. Yeah. And you, so here, let, let me read it. And you, he had made alive who were dead in trespass and sins. He made you alive. You remember a couple of years ago? Yeah, I remember. Okay. You remember? I remember. That's why I'm looking at you. Because you were like perfect candidate at the time. Yes, sir. And here we're, we're talking to it. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Remember, ever since Adam and Eve fall in the garden and Eden, the garden of Eden, everyone from the point from that day on were born, still born in their spirit. This is what he's talking about. Then when you find our Lord Savior Jesus Christ and accept Him, basically you become born again. The whole world, the whole word born again, John chapter 3 speaks of is, you know, when you are alive in Jesus Christ and accept Him, you're born again, your spirit is born, you are made alive while you were dead before. So every single one of us, we were dead. But then eventually, one day, we get the good message of the Lord Jesus Christ that He died for us in our sins, and we accept that, we say thank you basically, that's all there is to it. You say thank you that you died for me, so now that spirit in you that was dead is alive. So now, remember, there's that dead, the dead man is on your back. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. 
Yeah. Them all yes. And bury them. Bury them. But Lock once them in a while, he pops up. up. Yeah. Once in a month, he puts back. him right back on his back. It's, it's heavyweight. Yes. And he stinks. I remember he's been dead two years ago. Two years ago, he was dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Two years ago, two years ago, he buried that man. But once in a while, he want to dig him back out. Yeah, dig him back out. But you know that stench of that? It's hard. It's hard. That, that stiff, stinky body, he wants to carry it back on. That's what he's talking about. He goes, you used to be dead, but I made you alive. Keep that body away. When he wants to come out like a zombie, you know, he sticks his hand. You know, the way guys you watch zombie movies, you know, the hands come out of the ground. You know, like, a, like those zombies, you know, the hands come out first and they want to come out. You got to stump on him and say, no, you're not coming out. You stay down there. I be trying to miss poop. Sometimes, you know what I mean? It's right. Oh, yeah. Right, you know, yeah. Yeah. Them, you yeah. Know? Well, you didn't step on him. Step on him. Step on him. Like, man. Po Pookie jump up and say, hey, man, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. We name. We change. My name is Clyde. I no longer Pookie. You stay down there as you belong. Amen? Amen. All right. Verse 2. Number three also, please. Among whom we all once lived in the passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath. Thank you. Amen. And now he explains more. Before our trans transformation, before our software was changed, that we were all so like everybody else, walking to the beat of our flesh, to the beat of the world, to the pleasures of the flesh, the pleasures of the world, and the needs and wants of what everybody else was telling us. Basically, dead man walking, like zombies, like I was, we were talking about. But now, this is things that because of the spirit inside of us is alive, and now the spirit is, that was stillborn is alive. When your spirit is alive, and now you're acting differently than you used to be before. Before, you were like everybody else, walking around like a zombie. You had no God intention in you but now that the spirit is alive that God came in you and he said come on join me and you said okay thank you so now you walk differently now when Clyde makes a mistake he reminds himself in him from inside says that's pookie move man we ain't doing that no more that's an old move. We're not doing that no more. We're changing now. We don't do that anymore. We, we're stepping this way. We're not stepping that way. So these are the things that he's talking about. He's reminding us, and he wants us to make sure that we understand. Amen? Preach. Four and five. Preach. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Thank you. And he says, even though we were in that condition, but God loved us so much, John 3, 16, and by grace gave us the opportunity to be saved. What's grace, Greg? Grace is holding the sign. Grace is holding the sign. Hold on. What's grace, Greg? It's Greg's favorite, set, favorite word in his life. Yeah favor of God. Remember Greg, that's the only question God's going to ask you when you die. So better get it right. Because you're, all, you're, you're so far so good. Good. Please don't forget that because he's going to ask you because he knows that's one word you need to remember. What's grace? And you need to remember that. Amen? Six and seven. Okay, and what does he do? He raises up, just like he raised the first fruit, the Lord Jesus from the dead. First one rise from the dead physically. So the perfect example of our spiritual dead, he was rose from the dead physically into alive, and we alone became alive through our Lord Jesus Christ. Like he was risen, we are also risen, and we will be with him in heavenly places because of his kindness through the Lord Jesus Christ only. See, the whole point is, he gave us the perfect example. The first fruit, 
the first fruit is this is what said the Jewish tradition is that the first fruits God says give it to me that's why we give the tithing tithing is the first 10 percent it means the first of all things got to go to God so they says so that was the first thing Jesus was the first fruit he came from the dead he rose so now you and I as followers were also rising in that amen we understand that yes yes eight and nine young lady Thank you. Full explanation of what grace is right here. The most important two verses, you know, after John 3.16. It says right here, For grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. That's why grace is unmerited, unearned gift of God. Unmerited, unearned favor of God. Unmerited, unearned, it means you didn't, you wasn't given, to, it wasn't like so you were uh, entitled to it. You didn't work for it. It wasn't something that you earned. It wasn't something that you were like supposed to inherit. It was a gift from God that was given for no reason. It's like you just showed up here and I just gave you a box of gift. And you're like, what's this for? Nothing. Here, it's just grace. I'm just giving it to you. That's grace. Grace is giving something that you didn't do nothing for it. You're like, what am I supposed to do? What do you expect? From, you know what I'm saying? It's like in the world, it's kind of hard when somebody gives you something and they don't want nothing in return. You get, oh, uh oh, what's that all about? Kind of thing. Amen? This verse 10. Yes. Reaching himself outside, starving himself. As, as a monk. Up. As a monk, and, and he, he wasn't doing was enough, yes. In the Bible, so that means that the Catholic Church not only didn't teach this, because this is what started where we are today. Amen. The uh, born again believers. Right. Started with Martin Luther. And so he, they didn't even know this verse it was there because they weren't that into the Bible. They just read the verses that they wanted to. They still do that. They just read the yeah. verses in church. Amen. You're right. You're right. They You're right. The they still don't study it word by word, chapter by chapter, Probably like we do. A lot of people don't like the idea of studying the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter, because they feel that it's that's too much. The point is, if you don't study it, you will skip the things that God wants. Every word, it's inspired by the Lord, inspired by God, the Holy Spirit inspired writing. So every word is important. Clyde, 10. I said, not 11. Yeah, yeah, that, was 11. that was 11. Sorry about that. For we are His work. Uh-huh. we are His work, workmanship. Workmanship. Created in Jesus Christ. The real works. Which God prepared beforehand. That we should walk in them. Thank you. This verse tells us the original language in Greek. Workmanship means poem. That we are God's poetry. That He wrote about us. We were created for Jesus through Jesus from the beginning that we should walk in him. That was John 1, 1 we talked about. It. So we were put on this earth to be conduit of God's love, to spread his love to others. That was the purpose that we were created for in the beginning. God created all mankind so we can show others his love. We are basically God's conduit. We are showing God's love through us to others. Through us to others. God pours his love into us so we can pass it on to others, so people can experience what God's love is. And God's love is, is unconditional. Not so. You do something for her, not because she has doing something for you. You just do it because that's God wants you to. Just, you do it. Now, if you get something back in return, she's nice back to you, she whatever, whatever, that's a bonus. That has nothing to do. That's her job of giving unconditionally. It's all about us to give one another unconditionally. 
You guys come here every week, right? I take care of all of you one way or another. Ministry, Word of God, teaching, and food. Do I expect anything back? No. Perfect example. The whole purpose is that. Just to do, not expecting. I actually get heartbroken when people don't come. <laughs> and you guys know that. Because it's like, come on. You know, I want to show my... That's how God is. He's get heartbroken when we don't show up. So today, let's say it could have been 30 people. We had may, over 50 people came in out of this church, right? Oh, maybe over 100. Could you imagine all of them are here all the time? So the ones that are not here today, he's heartbroken about. He's like, man, I want to show you my love and you're not even there. That's what he's saying. 11, 12, brother. Thank you. Here is reminding Ephesus church, the Gentile church, that in the old days it was clean and unclean, and also uncircumcised and, uh, and circumcised. That's how they were distinguished. That Christ came through the Jewish nation first, and then the Gentile world was the outside with uh, no hope, that the, that the, but they got crafted in, okay? Um, but he's giving them the picture of what the world is today and what the world was in then especially without Christ and the Gentile were being hopeless at the time he said but now they have hope the key is being hopeful when people think it's not hopeless amen Bill 13 to 15 but now in Christ Jesus you want, who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ for he himself is our peace who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in the flesh the enemy, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Thank you. You ended where? Fifteen. Yeah. Thank you. Here, we see it again. All we need is of Lord Jesus. He's the one who came for, uh, and He fulfilled the law and crafted in the Gentiles into the new covenant with the old, which are the Jews altogether. One way for peace with God after all those years with enmity. Simple as that. That we all became one. See, now still today, let's say, see how we have the, the Jewish brothers and us. You know, they look at us. They listen, they're like the same messages, but oh, why we're not the same people? But the word, the, the word of God is saying we are. We are. We are. But they don't read the New Testament, so it's hard for them to understand that. See the point? Yeah. All right. Don't read the New Testament. Right. Greg, 16. Hurry up. So the preparation between Jew and Gentile, clean and unclean, circumcised and uncircumcised, it's all gone through the body of Christ Jesus. With His body, with the cross, He became the bridge. So we put us all together. He put us all together. By Him, by Him dying as a Jew, God Himself became a, a Jew and died for everyone, including the Gentiles He brought in. See the picture? He's dying him when dying the exactly he's right when, when, did this, when did they stop sacrificing right when after Jesus died when did Jesus die that was it he became the final sacrifice the world knew not to kill the lamb no more didn't die and tell them correct them. we don't have to all the believers don't because now you still do basically you go, but you're going with the name in Jesus name you go you're going with all these places and stuff and they do that and they have lambs well, the, the temple is, hasn't been there for the last 2,000 years, so they don't have an actual temple to sacrifice the lamb at. They want to build the temple and do the sacrifices again. They still believe in the lamb sacrifice, 
but Jesus became the Lamb of God. He became the final sacrifice. So He is the sacrifice. So that's why we close in Jesus' name. That's the sacrifice. Every time we come to God, in Jesus' name, with Jesus. Amen? Jesus 17, 18. This temple is going to be torn down. Yes. Not one stone on another. That came in AD 70. Jesus died in 1830, something like that. So uh, now ever since then, they would be still doing it, but they can't. Because Bill. 1718. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Thank you. So now we see the near, which were the Jews with the tabernacle, and far the Gentiles. All Cain can come through the Father without a middle person, without a priest or the high priest to do the sacrifice. Exactly what you were asking, brothers. For them, we can all go with the name of Jesus straight to the Father and straight to the throne room. Exactly what you were asking, this is the answer for it right there. 1718 tells us right there. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. That means the Jews, afar off us. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Through the name Jesus, we can both go to the Father. They don't need a lamb anymore. They just need the name Jesus. That's what he just said right here. 1718 gave you the answer of the question. You know, uh, Grandma was dying of cancer. Uh huh. And I, I couldn't go in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Some right. Men, you right. Just can't go in there. Right. And they said you have to, right? So I went in, and uh, weeks later, you know, I went in. And my grandma was, her eyes was gone. You know, she couldn't see. Her hair was gone and stuff. And I didn't even know how she knew I was there. And she said, I see your spirit. I'm, I'm leaving tonight. I'm leaving. Exactly. Yes, through the Lord you Jesus, you're going to see it again. Right she was saved. She's going home. She saw your spirit, and she knew you're born again. And you're going to see her again. Powerful, ain't it? Powerful. If that's not enough evidence, I don't know what is. Go ahead. 19, then, Clyde. Go ahead and read 19. Or somebody, you read 19, young lady. <clears throat> This is adoption that we're all, all of us got adopted. As we said last time, under the Roman law, the adoption children are the same rights and have the same privileges as the biological children. And here we are into the household of God, we are called saints. So here is a perfect example. If you accepted the Lord, you change, your spirit is alive. So guess what? Now you are adopted into the family of God, into the family of the Lord. Shalom. So you are part of, you became an adopted children with the same rights. You get it? 20. Build on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Amen. So here again it says, Jesus Christ fulfills the old covenant. He fulfills the law. He became on top of it with the new covenant fulfillment of the old covenant. And, and Him being the chief cornerstone, because you cannot build something without a cornerstone, meaning that everything, whatever old or new, prophets or apostles are all built upon the cornerstone of foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. So everything was built upon Him, whether it's the old or the new, all of it. With he is the foundation. Without that foundation, nothing is built. Amen? Brother, would you finish this up? 21, 22. Thank you. So in heaven, we all going to be whole building. All of us in one. Basically, the temple in the center of us would be God. That's what He's given us the picture of. This is the final picture of us being the dwelling place of God, all of us together. So ultimately, in the end, when you're going to see your grandmother, me, you, all of us in this room here, and all of us that we know the believers, we're all going to be together in one place, God in the center. We're all going to be one again. That's the beauty. The beauty, the picture is that all of us are being one. Amen? Understanding how the Pope picture is? So please remember next there. week I'm going to ask what's the message of last week's chapter 2. It's all of us going to be one in the end, in spirit. 
our spirit is alive and we're all connecting together again. Just like your grandmother said so. I see it, I'm going, right? We're Amen? Already here. We're already in the temple. Is already the temple is here. here. The temple. We're, the, we're, we're the church. So there's no change when we go to heaven. That's what I'm saying. We're all going to be together. To this is, it's just more of us together. It's yeah, just going to be more of us. It's not our world. Amen. So let's, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the study. Thank you for all the brothers who are here and the sisters also, Lord. Thank you for everybody, Lord. Thank you for the amazing meal. Bless us, O Lord. Bless the food we're about to receive. Bless the hands who prepared it. And bless everyone who gave it to us. Father God, may you just bless this day, this ministry, and everyone's about to receive it, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. Again, you see how we close it? In Jesus' name. So we came with that lamb sacrifice. And thank you for watching. We'll see you Monday.